at the Quinell Arts and Recreation Centre atrium outside the Quinell Art Gallery and Gift Shop. Glass cases on either side of the foyer highlight some elements of the Resonate Art exhibit. Inside the gallery, Resonate artists Sherry Maisonneuve and Judith Desbrise will discuss selected works from this luminous art exhibit. I'm Sherry Mazenov and I'm here at the Quinell Art Gallery and we have our show Resonate. We're going to talk to you a little bit about how it is to work with resin and what the pieces are that we're showing here. So this one is one of a series, most of mine is a Dreaming of the Ocean series. This is 100 and I used a lot of iridescent and metallic components to really make the reflection of the water show and shine through. I really like how they move together and it creates a sense of ocean moving back and forth. And so you, the resin works dry as if they're clear glass. And so it invites you to come in and feel those waves and feel that feeling of being on the beach and near the water. Can you feel it? So generally a lot of my art is mixed media and there's a lot of texture that draws you in to touch it. The opposite of that is resin that dries, it's self-leveling, so it dries like glass and it's clear. But I've tried to incorporate some different elements in these pieces to still give me some of that texture feeling. So here in this wave, I use some elements and some plaster and some things that actually continue to make it bumpy. You still shouldn't touch it because it's glass, but it does give that bit more of depth. You can have depth in a few different ways in layering resin, layer upon layer, or actually by mod podging or using different elements underneath it so when it self-levels, it still has peaks and valleys. So this is one that had um, different components underneath. This one over here, I used peacock feathers, and so it was mod podging and layering the peacock leather feathers along with the resin. So there's a lot of texture and depth if you look into it. These ones, um, I added some sparkle. Leave a little sparkle everywhere you go. Big believer in that one. This one, Deep Sea Love, you really get different sorts of iridescent sparkles depending on the light, how it shines. In a home, um, it would change sort of its, its appearance from morning, noon, and night. So I love that when you have a piece on your wall that actually changes as the landscape or the time of day or the light changes. These pieces um, are black sands from Kona, Hawaii. So dreaming of my ocean series, these two are a little bit unique and that I actually incorporated sand from some of my vacations. So some of them have sand from Puerto Vallarta, from Oaxaca in Mexico, um, some from Portugal on the beaches. And these two in particular have black sand, so they're lava sands from beaches in Kona, Hawaii on the Big Island. So I really love how Again, the webbing of the white is a technique that took me two or three years really to um, perfect and even sometimes the resin continues to not listen and do what I want it to do. So part of my journey is learning about going with the flow, allowing the resin to mix and combine and do its amazing things. And even though I might have a different vision, it, it ends up doing its own thing. So it's helping me release control as an artist. And in the pieces, I really love how that releasing and the webbing of the white really shows up as far as giving the sensation of white foam beaches. And then the black sand is a real contrast against that. The 
webbing on this particular piece is really, really highlights that um, the different textures and the different densities of the resin compile differently to create this wonderful webbing that I really enjoy and I've tried to create in different ways in a number of the pieces through Dreaming of the Ocean series. These two pieces came together with my colleague Judith and I working together on these collaborations. So we each started a piece and we handed it back and forth and built upon each other's inspiration and how we started. So we have here on this one, they're both unnamed, so we really invite the viewer to come in and see what it means to you and what you might, what you might name the pieces. This one started off here. Um, and then Judith did some wonderful collage, and I did some texturing, that's my passion as well. And we did some gold leaf and then some drawing, and then again with some more um, resin pieces. And this was the end result. So this has a number of layers, and with each layer, a different technique was explored. And neither of us could imagine what the end result might be, but and we gave each other permission to do whatever we were inspired to do. This one here, we did the same thing, but it turned out very differently. So we started with this beautiful color here, and I got a great idea to cover it in black. Thought I would get in great big trouble. And then we, I used a different technique that I'd never used, that I'd never tried before, but I really wanted to explore, and raised up some of those pieces also using some glow-in-the-dark resin. And then we ended up with this, again, flat piece that glows in the dark and um, had different techni techniques applied to it. So it was quite wonderful to be able to have the freedom to explore and try different techniques and work with another artist to build upon each other's skills and interests and desires and just to see where the journey took us. I hope you enjoy them. Hello, I'm Judith Debersay. Sherry and I are presenting the Resonate Art Exhibit. Here we have Glimpse. This gentle piece invites the viewer to explore the interplay of tinted resin poured in a painterly manner upon a glowing base of abstract forms created with acrylic pigment. Elusive elements emerge, providing us glimpses into an imagined space. Hints of vibrantly hued form are balanced with a sense of quiet timelessness. I invite the viewer to gaze silently at Glimpse for a few minutes, to become comfortable with the unknown imbued therein, and to make the piece their own. This is the Cosmos series. Chilean filmmaker Patricio Guzman's cinematic explorations influence my artwork. Alma, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array radio telescope is located in the Atacama Desert of northern Chile. The array of 66 high-precision telescopes provides images of stars, nebulas, and galaxies. The word Elma also denotes soul. I portray swirling spirals with hues of vibrant color emerging from the dark recesses of space. Layered within the resin depths of two works are collaged images that place a person within the context of space. Mayans consider Orion's belt as their hearth while pondering the origin of the world. Elma studies the early universe, seeks to discover our cosmic origins. What do you discover 
within this dramatic trio of resin-based works. The Witness series includes Overdrawn. As Gordon Smith eloquently stated, I am one of a tribe of artists. His work and that of Sylvia Tate, along with countless others, have influenced my creation of Overdrawn. This passionate piece is a love letter to Tahardi, the remote caribou expanse that we call home. From Overdrawn's blues and greens and umber-hued resin layers emerge elusive words, rising from the remnants of the devastating 2017 Plateau Fire and the subsequent flooding of our wilderness property and all points downstream. The dense depiction draws us into its depths where we discover hand-drawn lines, creating their own shadow lines, thus adding to the personal narrative, which echoes our global climate crisis. Final notice, humankind's account with nature is overdrawn. Resin is self-leveling. It flows, it blends, it finds its own path upon a selected substrate. In light, the ink-tinted resin was poured upon glass. The cyan, magenta, and yellow hues, accented by streams of white, direct the viewer's eyes outwards beyond the confines of the framed piece. Despite the intense colors and the dynamic movement, light is translucent. Display this resin work in a window to optimize the ever-changing interplay of natural and composed light, some of which is cast back into your home. Look up. <laughs> There's a large piece on plexiglass with similar characteristics. Tinted resin layers in How High Is the Sky create an incremental tapestry of form and color. Clear resin layers accent the depth within the piece, while ink-drawn lines hint at a mysterious, indecipherable alphabet. The trio of mini canvases are tinted in color to underscore the effects of the, the main central form, thus expanding the narrative. I invite you, viewer, to discover your own story for this pair of works. Where does your imagination take you when your gaze shifts from the sky to the sea? How do you incorporate this delicately hued and carefully inscribed bead necklace into the sea's mystery. Do these works complement one another? Or do they serve as contrasting bookends to an unnamed continuum? <laughs>